The act of monitoring critical control points involves a planned sequence of observations or measurements to establish whether a critical control point is under control and to produce accurate records for future use and verification. Monitoring is important to ensure that the critical limits are consistently met. Monitoring also serves to alert the operator when measurements indicate that the process is trending out of control. Note that there are three major responsibilities of the monitor. The monitor must conduct observations or measurements according to a predetermined plan and at the specific frequency indicated by the plan. The monitor has the responsibility to establish that the measured control parameters are within the critical limits and record that information. If there is a deviation, another part of the monitor's responsibility is to begin the corrective action process. A deviation is a reading at a CCP that fails to fall within the critical limits. The monitor must make a written real-time record of the results of the monitoring. Usually, the identity of the monitor will be specified according to the position such as the operator, shift supervisor, or QC technician. Before being assigned responsibility, the monitor must understand the importance of the job and be trained in the correct procedures to be used. Training should include the calibration of monitoring equipment if necessary. Also, the monitor must understand his or her responsibilities should a deviation occur. A primary objective of monitoring is to measure a characteristic of the product or of the process to determine compliance within a critical limit. As has been previously stated, some control measures will have their attributes measure directly and some may use an indirect measurement. Both types of monitoring should be validated for the intended use in order to assure that the results of the monitoring are relevant to the control point. If screening tests are used, they should be validated against the standard if indirect measurements are used, they must be backed up by data that indicates their validity. Monitoring must be designed to provide real-time results to immediately detect whether or not the process is in control. Rarely do production schedules provide time for lengthy analytical testing. And for that same reason, most traditional microbial tests are not suitable for monitoring. Microbial testing does not normally measure the application of a process, though it may measure the goal of a process. Microbial methods are very sample dependent and may fail to measure the condition of the overall product from which the sample was drawn. In addition, these tests are time consuming because of the need to isolate and enumerate specific microorganisms. Some of the newer methods do show promise for fast results, however and they may prove useful in the future. As a rule, microbiological testing is reserved for validation of more direct measurements. The most common control measure is temperature, but this must be treated wisely. For example, if temperature of a storage facility is used in a cooling critical limit, then the cooling rate, the temperature, time, and maximum product size must be monitored because this cooling rate will be dependent on all of these factors. So to get to this point, several measurements of temperature over time will need to be made to account for carcass to carcass variation. Once the cooling rate is validated, the carcass may only need to be tagged with the time it went into the cooler and the cooler temperature can be monitored. Using a terminal heat treatment for microbial destruction can be monitored using a final cook temperature measured by a thermometer. In the case of a continuous cooking process, such as the high temperature short time pasteurization of milk or juice, the maximum speed of the timing pump is sealed and the hold tube is of a fixed length. The only parameter that needs to be monitored is the temperature. Since continuous flow equipment is equipped with automatic diversion for low temperatures and with continuous recording, the monitor's job is usually confined to noting the batches on the chart and initialing the record. 
calibration of the recorder with the mercury and glass thermometer and checking the cut in and cut out of the flow diversion device is usually accomplished at the beginning of the run. In a batch process, such as some fish smoking operations, for a particular size batch, the temperature rise in the cabinet is often correlated with the temperature rise in the product. Often, a thermocouple in the thickest piece is monitored since the product is stationary. In this case, since the temperature rise in the product is programmed to be relatively slow, the time to cook temperature may be the parameter monitored along with the terminal center temperature. When a terminal heat treatment is not used, as in some very acidic pickle products, the final equilibrium pH of representative containers and the time of storage before distribution may be monitored. When product is to be stored pending equilibrium testing and storage time, it should be isolated so it cannot be accidentally shipped too early. The monitoring for allergen avoidance is often an either-or type of monitoring. If a production matrix is used to ensure that allergen-containing products are run only after all other products are run, that might constitute the critical limit. Once an allergen-containing product is run on shared equipment, a complete cleanup followed by a negative test for product residual from the previous run may be the critical limit. Sometimes the concentration of an ingredient is a critical limit, either to make sure the concentration is adequate or to make sure not too much is added. In milk fortification, for example, fat-soluble vitamins are added by a continuous pump. A daily vitamin reconciliation is used to make sure that excessive amounts are not added and to make sure the vitamins were, in fact, injected. Sometimes, with the batch process, Individual pre-weighed containers are used to eliminate the chance of multiple additions. The containers are marked with batch numbers which are attached to or recorded on the production make sheet. It stands to reason that continuous monitoring of a process will usually be the most desirable, especially when it is backed up with continuous automatic records. The monitor's job in this instance becomes regular examination of the permanent record to ensure that it is being made and that it remains an accurate representation of the conditions at the CCP and also that the readings recorded are within the critical limits. There are certain considerations for choosing the frequency of monitoring. Probably the greatest consideration is the consequence of longer intervals between observations. Once a process is observed to be out of control, all product since the last observation becomes suspect. Suspect product is all products for which the safety cannot be assured from the HACCP plan. Suspect product must be isolated for determination of safety, reprocessing, or destruction. Monitoring frequencies are often chosen on the basis of product or process statistics. If critical limits are tight or if normal variation in the process is high, the frequency of monitoring may need to be shortened. On the other hand, if monitoring does not show much variation over time and the history of deviations in the process is low, the decision may be made to lengthen the frequency of monitoring. Monitoring frequencies may be increased on a temporary basis based on such considerations as raw material variation process variables or recent deviations. For batch operations, the size of the batch may be an important consideration. FSIS requirements state that if a product is to be shipped immediately, monitoring must be completed before pre-shipment sign-off on records is completed.